Hey, my name's The Maraday. In today's episode, we're going to look into how to make our own totally customizable LED strips. It's easier than you think. Welcome to episode four of the Electric Fursuit. Let's go. In today's episode, we will need a portable USB battery pack, an old charging cable that we can hack up, some clear 10 mm heat shrink tubing, some wire, a WS2812B LED strip, an Arduino Nano, and a mini USB cable to connect our Arduino to our PC. Let's first go through the anatomy of a WS2812B LED. These LEDs are the most common RGB individually addressable LED. This means we can connect as many as we like and still control the colour and brightness of each LED individually. Each of these LEDs actually contains three smaller LEDs, one red, one green and one blue, hence the term RGB. We can mix varying amounts of each LED to make any colour we want. They usually cost around 10 cents per LED and come in strips of 30 to 144 per meter. Today I'm using a roll of 30 LEDs per meter in the non-waterproof variety. So how do we power them? Well, unlike regular LEDs, we can't use resistors to get just the right voltage. Instead, we need exactly 5 volts. We can get this from a USB phone charger, as all USB power is exactly 5 volts. So that's the voltage sorted, but how about current? Well, now we're moving on to more power-hungry projects, we need to keep an eye on the amount of current we're drawing. USB power sources such as portable chargers and wall sockets can output anything from 500 to 2500 milliamps of current, so it's always best to check. This battery pack is rated up to 2000 milliamps, but I'm going to play it safe and assume it can only provide 1000. Now each of these LEDs can draw up to a maximum of 60 milliamps if the red, green and blue LEDs are all set to full bright. So if we divide the battery's 1000 milliamps by a single LED's maximum current draw of 60 milliamps, we can find out that we can power around 16 LEDs with this battery pack. In the real world, we could power around 70, however, when starting out, it's always a good idea to play it safe. To give you an idea, the shot at the start with 150 LEDs doing that rainbow pattern only drew 2000 milliamps. Now up until this point, we've just been guessing when it comes to wire, however, now is an excellent time to brush up on what we should be doing. Apart from the insulation, the main thing we need to keep in mind is its thickness. This is measured in AWG. The lower the AWG, the thicker the wire. For most projects, I would recommend AWG 30 for anything up to 100 milliamps. this is perfect for single LEDs and signal wires, AWG 26 for anything up to 2000 milliamps perfect for today's project, and AWG20 for larger projects up to 6000 milliamps. This is what I use in my glow suit. Regardless of thickness, I would recommend stranded wire with silicon insulation. It's easier to tear, but highly flexible and hard to melt compared to other kinds of wire. Now let's wire everything up. Firstly, let's put a USB plug on the end of our LED strip so we can connect it to our USB power supply. Simply cut the spare USB cable in half and pair back the insulation inside. There should be a red and black wire, the rest we can ignore. As all the LEDs share 5 volts and ground, we can connect the red wire from our USB cable to any 5 volt pad and the black to any ground pad. Now our strip has power, we need to control it somehow, and this is where the Arduino comes in. An Arduino is like a tiny computer that we can use to control our LEDs. Personally, I use knockoff Arduinos, which can be found on sites such as eBay under terms like Arduino Compatible. They do exactly the same job as the official ones at a quarter of the price. Now the way we'll use this to control our LEDs is by sending a signal from one of the Arduino's digital output pins to the first data in pin on our strip. That LED will receive the signal and pass it on to the next using its data out pad. To do this, solder the Arduino's D3 pin to the first D in pad and the GND pin to any GND pad. Make sure to connect the Arduino to the data in pad and not the data out pad, otherwise the signal will run backwards down the LED strip and create negative light. Honey! Sorry! Ow! 
If we want to split our LED strip down into smaller strips, simply cut, then reconnect the pads with three lengths of wire. Next, download and install the Arduino IDE from the Arduino website. Connect your board to your PC using a micro USB cable. Head over to Tools and have a look at these three options. Board. This should be set to Arduino Nano. Processor. Leave this as Atmega 328P. Unless you have issues, then try the old bootloader. Port. This should read something like COM4. Next, we need to tell our Arduino how to communicate with our LEDs by installing a library called Fast LED. To do this, Tools, Manage Libraries, and search for Fast LED. Hit Install, and you're done. Next, let's copy and paste, sorry, let's write some code. What do you take me for, some kind of professional? This code will give us a nice animated rainbow. The only thing we need to change is our numLEDs variable from 4 to 16. I'll be going into how the rest of this works in another video. But if we just want to fiddle with how fast the rainbow goes or how wide it is, we can adjust the rainbow speed and rainbow width values. Next, upload the program. Once that's complete, we can plug the Arduino and the LED strip into the portable charger and we should be off. Fantastic. Now before we install these into a fursuit, we need to protect them from moisture. We can do this by using clear 10mm heat shrink and some hot glue. We can use a lighter for this, but I would recommend investing in a hot air gun. Now these LEDs are ready to be mounted. To do this, we can put them in sewn pockets on the back of the fur or glue them to the fursuit base before furring. Be warned though, however we mount them, LED strips and especially solder joints aren't designed to be flexed and will fail over time. So make sure they're easily accessible and far away from your joints. If we want to mount LEDs to an area that will flex, or we want them to last, I would recommend making your own strips out of WS2812B lily pad LEDs. These are the same LEDs found on the strips, but mounted on a small circuit board instead. We can use the pads on the rear to connect each LED to the next. Once we've done this, place a dollop of hot glue on the back and cover with heat shrink tubing. This will keep the LEDs stiff whilst allowing the wires to flex. We can even mix and match strips and lily pads if we want. We should now be able to wire up LED strips and have a great understanding of how they work. Massive thanks to Lilypad, Aminafis and Garion for proofreading this week's episode, as well as Emblade Akita for basically pioneering LEDs inside fursuits. Join me next week on how to customise the animation and how to launch effects at the push of a button. I hope this helps. Marilyn, out. <laughs>